No, you talked on, on podcast. It's the Sutton Podcast. And there it is. Sutton United have the GM Foxhall Conference have put down first division Coventry City. Winners of the FA Cup themselves less than two years ago. And what a moment to enjoy for the fans of this Surrey side. They've had their moments before, but never won like this. But the whistle goes now. New life for Sutton United. Sutton United for the National League are through to the last 16 of the FA Cup. No longer English football's perennial non-league club. A 123-year crescendo reaches a new peak for Sutton United, who are promoted to the Football League for the first time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast. It's the midweek social. Um, starting off this week, and um, something I don't want to make a habit of because I think it will last far too long if we do it, um, but it's a little correction. Last time out, I um, attributed the chef's kiss for David's goal to Gandamoyum, and it was actually the um, SUFC facts page, um, which if you're not following them on Twitter, please do so. But as I say, please don't keep sending me in corrections because I really haven't got time to correct all my mistakes. <laughs> Um, joining me today um, is A.B., Mr. Vice Chairman. Hello, A.B., how are you? Hello, Mike. How lovely to see you and speak to you today. You must have had a late cancellation, did you, or something? To, uh... <laughs> no, no, no. You're always on my list. You know that. <laughs> okay, what, your, your little intro there, the other uh, commentary of the backdrop there, it's uh, got me heart racing again. It gets the old uh, emotions going. Hey. It, it does. The, 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 the three big moments. Um, I, I have to say my ego is big enough, but um, I I put that together, and it was just the music fitted in with the with the just the little ding at the end where it says the football league for the first time. It's like oh, <laughs> gets you going, gets you going deep inside. <laughs> it, it is a bit long, but it it feels shorter than the previous one I've done, which just seemed to go on forever. But um, yeah, no, I, didn't, I like you know, it. I, I didn't like it. it. Um, and thankfully, I did a little vote with this one and another one. And mine just came out just. Just in front, um, I don't know how to take that because both team at both face also won a, a poll, so we, we, we take these things for pinch us all. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, just just wanted to kind of um, catch up, so, say um, who, who you are, because a lot of obviously Sutton fans have uh, grown considerably over the last um, couple of years, um, and you would be um, part of the board, but you haven't always been part of the board you were um come up from from terraces the same as everyone else so just tell us a little bit about your Sutton history yeah well not dissimilar to a lot of members of the board to be honest mike you know my my dad took me down to gander green lane 1970 i'm going to say i was eight years of age uh and it's a funny old thing how this football club gets in your blood uh and, <laughs> and so it went on from there um obviously i was i was, went to school in Purley. A lot of my friends around that time were all Palace fans, and I was always staunch Sutton. Um, and what I, my, my parents actually went back to Ireland. They, uh, my, my dad was from Cork, and my mother was a Dubliner, and, and they went back to Ireland. And I stayed in this country, went to school, and lived with friends in uh, Carshalton. And uh, I carried on going to Gander Green Lane, and then went to college, uh, came back, got a job in the local area, picked up from where I left off, and took on various different roles throughout the. The, the period obviously in the mid to late 80s it was unbelievable time under Barry Williams when we were in the conference on on that occasion uh, the FA Cup run against Coventry the previous year obviously Aldershot Peterborough and Middlesbrough as well we were going home and away four or five of us in in cars the forerunner I like to say of Gandemonium and the Cox we were <laughs> we called ourselves Suet Sutton United <laughs> executive travel way back in the day so you know so, nice nice <laughs> And then, you know, in the 90s, obviously, uh, got married, had some kids. That kind of deflected a little bit from going home and away everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. But then sort of from from when the kids were, were growing up a little bit, sort of 2002, two, three, ever present. Um, and then got involved in various initiatives. I, my, my, my job was, was sales and marketing for a travel firm. And uh, I'd, it was always my 
bugbear that there are an awful lot of chimney pots in the Sutton area and not all of them are coming to watch my favourite football team and it was irritating me. So got involved in lots of initiatives to try and drive attendances back then and then lots of other initiatives as well via the, the trust and, and then the, the, the foundation. And, and then Bruce, Mr Sutton United, invited me to uh, be his vice chairman in 2016-17 having been on the board as the kind of trust representative sort of four or five years before that. But, you know, we're all just fans, Mike. That's, that's the way of it. Uh, uh, you know, you know that. Yeah, absolutely. And this is, this is um, kind of something I, I there's, there's certain things I've got, I've got in my brain and I will just keep banging it. Whether they're true or not, I kind of just keep banging it. Um, but there's certain things I'm like, no, this is, this needs to be told. Um, obviously, as we're moving up and having bigger and bigger clubs, you're hearing bigger and bigger problems. We had to chap on from Oldham, who just gave out this litany of disasters going on at Oldham. And at one point, I kind of thought, oh, I should probably jump in here and, and stop him. But I was like, no, I think people need to hear this and realise that um, we're, in, we're in the safe hands. Um, we've got people who are, yes, there's, there's, there's the very, could be classed as old fashioned blazers and ties, but the priority is always the club. Um, not doesn't have to be the first team. I know the first team are a major part of the club, but it's the club. It's the, 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 the beating heart of, of what goes on is everyone cares about the club. Everyone's priority is the club. Um, I've said many times that we're run by a bunch of accountants. I know you're in sales, but I've never taken it as, as, as a, an insult. It's actually really, really good because we cut our cloth accordingly and look at what's happened the last 10 years, 11 years. Um, we, it's just been amazing. Um, and yeah, you, you've been kind of on the inside for pretty much all of that period of, of growth. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm tiring. Yeah, I mean, just a minute. <laughs> if, if ever the phrase "living the dream" was uh, as now, uh, Mike, it's you know, not not going to lie. It's been a lot of hard work over a long period, but you know, just this is our passion. This is what we do. I, I, I've always, you know. Words are easy to say, but Sutton United is a is a, a real family community club, um, and it's it's run accordingly as well. You know, we, we, we're obviously now transitioning to a full time professional football league club. Or, you know, amazing to say the words, but it's true. Uh, but the the ethos, the philosophy of the club remains remains absolutely the same. And I said this to you on the terraces recently when we were standing together watching a, a game, one of the Surrey Senior Cup game, I think it was, wasn't it? And we, we, we spent five minutes together over there when you invited me on this show, actually. <laughs> and, you know, it's easy to say the words, and we've, we've said them before, it's a really important mantra, though, this, this in it together. This is a club run by volunteers. You know, there are no egos, no agendas. Everyone is driven by absolutely the same motives, um, which is always, always to act in the best interests of Sutton United Football Club. Um, and, and that has brought us to where we are now. And I'd like to think that you know, we're biased. We think it's a special club. We've got really special people in it right across the board. I mean, you know, I was, I was down there this morning and I'm, I'm constantly amazed by the contribution of, of the volunteers that we've got, you know, manning the shop, manning the office, down doing the improvements to the stadium on a Tuesday. You know, er everyone is really bought into the concept of Sutton United. And I, and I think it's also translated to the management team and the players because, you know, that, that mantra is very much a lot of the, the, the togetherness right across the club at the minute is 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 amazing to see. And, and, and that's the culture we're looking to inculcate. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually did a tiny, tiny piece for um, Sky Sports EFL podcast. And that's pretty much what I said is um, there's no secret here. Any club can do this. It's just you've got to have everyone on the same page, pulling in the right direction. Um, if there's a bad performance, which to be fair, there hasn't been that many of them in the last few years. But if there's a bad performance, it's not. You don't hear everyone slagging players off. You don't hear people booing or anything like that. It's just, OK, next game, move on, move on. Appreciate the efforts. Um, I mentioned I, I, I was a bit of a media well, I won't say the word, but I was, I was and on, uh, I did, there's a BBC thing tonight and I said one of my favourite things is win, lose or draw. The players do that little half lap of thanking the fans. Really um, important, really important. Yeah, I know other clubs do a similar thing where they come over and, and cut the fans and go off, but it's just that, 
it just seems a little bit more that little connect that going around and the appreciation for both sides yeah. um and I, I do know that it was uh, under doswell it was part of his warm down routine i can't i know that but it's still matt coming across the whole entire bench coming across is is, is just amazing the, 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 as you say this togetherness um we've got things going on at the club i, I know bruce was on car park duty um <laughs> one of the under 18s matches which other clubs find like really um yourself i know you're 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 often ar around um the, the the ticketing area um grabbed you there a couple of times as well <laughs> so it is just really in everyone's blood and when when you think about most of the people i've actually had on up until i had um robert who's only been alive 17 years um i think the this the, the latest support was something like 20 years um everyone seems to stick around i know we've obviously got bigger recently and we've got lots of new supporters and i think it was actually yourself that said we're not it's not it's either you or bruce last time i did the podcast was um we're not ashamed to be people's second club um but now we're having a lot of conversations with people going well now Sutton are in, my, in the football league because they actually my first club now I had a, a, there was a guy's talking to one of the Sutton ladies clubs and he sports West Brom and he said I, I'm at this moment now which is my favorite is it Sutton or West Brom I grew up in supporting West Brom um, but Sutton are definitely taking their place in, in people's favorite clubs um, yeah, I'll tell you what's really interesting, actually, my, it's interesting that you say that because, yeah, we're, we're, we're very involved at the cold face on, on match days and throughout, you know, throughout the week, the, just the, the physical operation of, of running a football club. But it's on match days when, you know, our, our real essence is revealed, if you like. And it, I've been really gratified and we're kind of, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're work in progress. We're, we're getting there. We're, we're catching up with our amazing on-pitch performances. You know, what a team. Uh, and and we will get there. There's, you can see, even when you turn up this weekend for the Bristol Rovers game, there are changes to the stadium again. There's a big hole in the corner that wasn't there before, and that's going to be filled in a week or so's time. And I, you know, I can fill you in on that as well now, if, if you like. But the, the really important thing for me is that we're getting a lot of new visitors to the games. Obviously, fans who are trying us out, the 92 want to go around and see the different, yeah. you know, the different grounds visiting supporters and teams officials that obviously we haven't come across because we haven't played these teams and i've been really mindful of the fact that we've been rushing around on match day trying to make sure everything is spickety span and everyone gets in and has a good experience and and it's it's really good to know that some of the feedback that we get from officials and fans and supporters and newcomers to the ground is that you know we we really look after people they they kind of get Sutton united now that they've been there they they see what we're trying to do the passion the kind of just the the whole welcome that we give the warmth of it it's it's kind of restored a lot of people's faith in the game almost that was a couple of lines we got and that's great to hear because we know we're, we've got fairly humble surroundings at the minute we're, we're looking to to ensure that that happens you know you go to bradford city one week and then you come back home and we're at home the following week to harrogate it's a very very different um environment and yet we're competing in the same division and what we might lack at the minute in the facilities we're, we're making up for in, i hope in the in the, in the welcome we give and the experience that we're we're providing to to visitors to Gander Green Lane and and long may that continue. No, absolutely. There's, there's a couple of things that could bore everyone. My voice. Um, there, I can't remember who it was, but there was a there was a journalist quite early in the season, and he he took to Twitter and he said, "I just have received the absolute nicest email from Sutton United that I've ever received." From any club at all and he said all it is is organizing to go there and he said it's just that the, the, the personal touch everything in the email was just absolutely fantastic and he said it was just so strange to see after dealing with like cold professional clubs i'm not, we're not being professional but cold the coldness of the yeah yeah do that um he said it was just really nice and i had a guy from um colchester john john morton he's, he's reporter for colchester um, one of the gazettes and he said his visit he said everything was just absolutely wonderful because it, it really makes a difference when when you feel looked after at a club and not not kind of a burden that you're, you're there um so there was two like nice bits of feedback there and it does make you kind of oh that's good because there is a bit of grief about obviously the the, the, the ground not being absolutely perfect 
my stock response has been, okay, if you could imagine your club being in the Premier League in 12 years' time, that's the exact height that we've jumped from, 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 from low. So if you picked up your club now and put it in 12 years' time in the Premier League, what do you reckon Manchester United fans would be saying about your ground? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be quite the same as theirs, obviously. Um, but I know that the things move in a pace. I know the order went in and it's the delivery of the order. Um, but just a little bit, I know we kind of, not prioritising, but we, we, we've got to do certain things for the away section first, haven't we? Uh, yes and no. Obviously, the, the, the work that took place last year when we won, we won the league on the 23rd of May, what a day. And we had until, what was it, the 7th of August to start the new season to basically bring our stadium up to EFL2 standard. And, and the pitch was obviously number one within that. And that's a, that was a massive project in itself. And that's been well documented. Lots of other changes that people have seen in, this, in the stadium, not least of which are the floodlights, which how marvellous are they, by the way, now? And, you know, it's mm. just, yeah, re, re, you know, terrific. And the atmosphere at night matches is wonderful. Uh, and lots of other things as well, the turnstiles, the Wi-Fi, the temporary stand on the far side, all making good of all sorts of yep. things that we needed to yeah, do. Yeah. But right yeah, now, where we're at, Mike, just to let, make sure everyone is aware of this, is that by the end of April, we need to ensure that the stadium is able to accommodate 5,000 supporters with 1,000 seats in it. Um, and because of the configuration of the ground, we obviously have our, our main grandstand. Of course, we've got a bit of a temporary issue at the minute with the pillar on the far left-hand side, which I know has been a, a big inconvenience to fans who would normally sit in that area. But by and large, our seated situation requires us to put another seated grandstand in. Um, as you've probably seen from the ground at the minute, that gap between the away terrace and the blue TARDIS, as we like to call it in the corner, that has now had the slab laid mm -hmm. and the grandstand is due to arrive and be installed and then tested and checked um, now on the week commencing the 14th of February. So okay. at the end of that week, we should have a nice spangly, bright, brand new 282-seater stand in that corner of the ground. Um, now, contemporaneously with that going on, I was down the ground this morning, we have the demolition of the terracing alongside the TARDIS. Yeah. The other side of it, yeah? Yeah. I, think I, I, I did kind of, and I tried to do the odd video update and yeah. we kind of lasted the 18 minutes of, you know, cure for insomnia. <laughs> then they, they'll, they'll have seen, they'll have listened to this before, I know, but now it's actually happening. So that's now been flattened. So that terracing okay. no longer exists. It's amazing how much space there is actually when you see mm -hmm. it in that corner. And there's going to be a new terracing erected in that area, which will pretty much double the capacity of that particular section of the ground. Now, the beauty of that particular section is that it has the flexibility because of the segregation gates in its location to be a home end or a home section when we want it to be, and an away section equally when the demand re requires. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. that has that dual flexibility for us in order to get us up to the five thousand the next step um is for us to effectively move the away terrace back and up to be in line with the new stand okay so i've been saying that and i was hoping you said that was correct because i've said that to several people so yeah, i'm glad cool. as well so the timelines on this are reasonably tight but to be honest they you know they're, they're everything is going touch wood so far according to plan so that stand will be in 14th of february that week that's the idea the terracing which when you go to the game on saturday you'll see doesn't exist anymore next to it that work will be hopefully completed uh well in actual fact it's, it's happening right now so we're hoping by the end of february that terracing will be up and running and in situ and then the work can start on the away stand and move it back so that by the end of march beginning of april that whole area will have been redeveloped to enable us to get to the 5,000 and, and 1,000 seats. So the answer to your question is that, yes, it is 
presently, mostly the away end, which has seen the benefits of this with the exception mm -hmm. of that corner, but it was the most effective and easy to facilitate methodology for us to get to the 5,000 seats and one and with 1,000, sorry, 5,000 capacity with 1,000 seats in the timeline that was required. We have further plans for stadium development thereafter, but that was our first and pressing priority, and that's why we've done what we've done. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I, from a completely um, mercenary standpoint, um, having about 500 tickets we can sell to away fans and then having seven, 800 tickets to away fans, it makes, a, it makes a lot more sense to say, actually, we can get more away fans and get a bit more money match there as well. Um, so just to set my mind at rest, obviously Mike's miserable mound or the curver is staying forever. Yeah. It's, never, it's never going to be touched. <laughs> it's, it's not on the radar just at the minute, Mike. Your, your yeah. piece of concrete is safe and secure. Ah, oh, phew, phew. Good. Oh, hang on, I've got rid of that. Um, going, going back a little step, um, which ties in two of the, two, two of the uh, things we said, I've been kind of saying one of the points that I was really – really made me proud as a Sutton United fan of the club is when we obviously got promoted and we had the issue with the, the, the magic pitch that we weren't allowed to play on um everyone outside the club was kind of saying oh you just want it because it gives you an advantage obviously that's been put to rest but a lot of people myself included a lot of people were banging the drum and it took a little while to get the message across of no, we're not worried about that because the first team will always have a pitch to play on. We, we, the first team is going to be sorted. It's all the other teams that everyone was worried about, the community teams, the ladies' teams, the academy. Everyone was about saying, no, where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? So I know it's all sorted and I know everything's got the plans. But did that, did, was that on your radar? Did you realise people were saying that outside of, of, of the officials, that people were banging on and going, no, the first team are fine. The first team will always be able to play football. It's all the other teams that we're worried about. Well, we were obviously aware of that right from the off. And, and again, I, what I would reiterate is that last season was a, just a staggering achievement, wasn't it? When you when you look back on it, it, it was an absolutely staggering achievement to have won that league in front of the Knox Counties and Wrexhams and Chesterfield <coughs> and Torquays and the Hartlepools and you name it, that we, we prevailed against. When it was becoming possible that this was a, 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 a you know there was a prospect for us that we might even gain promotion to the football league the Sutton united board was well, was meeting weekly in any event throughout covid and it was a difficult season last season because we were unable to share the success with fans mm -hmm. and of course keeping in touch with the fan base and, and what you know it was really important to us because that's our heart that's our lifeblood it's our heart and soul you know this this whole togetherness thing so if, if we had any regrets from last season, it was that. And how good did that make the Hartlepool win at the end that we were able to share yeah. that again? So in answer to your question, the board were actually working. And it was one of the toughest times, if I'm being honest, because we were working behind the scenes to work out a revised model for Sutton United Football Club, to all intents and purposes. We knew that the kind of community aspect to what we were doing would be upset, that there'd be a displacement of a lot of our teams. It was the obviously the youth teams, the boys and girls, and women's team, the disability side, academy, all the, 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 the other community use that was going on on the pitch would be displaced. And so that was one element of it that we were working on from a really early stage. And it's not ideal now, but it has enabled us to get to where we've, we've got to right now and there are you know we're, we're still working really hard at ensuring that we're able to deal with that going forward but i think the hardest thing was that when we were actually preparing for this we had five or six tender arrangements with with pitch contractors for example and we had to get to a state where we were ready to press the button as soon as we'd know that we knew that we'd won the league with one of those contractors that then the bulldozers came down and ripped that surface up but the whole preparation process wasn't just a case of, right, how are we going to manage the pitch and the floodlights and all the other things, but what are we going to do with the displacement of all of our existing teams and keep that Sutton United heart and soul and family together? Really hard, because obviously they can't play at the stadium in the same way as they did before. But I'd like to think that we've, we've achieved it in a breakneck speed, albeit not ideally, because obviously they're not, not, at, not at the kind of spiritual home of Gander Green Lane at the minute as much as they used yeah. to. Yeah. But, it, it, yeah, but these things, they're there, and we can always 
we can always tweak and, and change as I go on. But yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm, and um, again, all, all the kids, one of the things I've said many times over the years, before, obviously before we're here, um, all the kids playing on the pitch, training on the pitch, there's that, 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 that's a sort of 30, 40 year plan because that's their pitch. And then when they bring their kids to football, it's like daddy's played on that pitch, mummy's played on that pitch. So it, it does, it did have a, a huge knock on and it, it will do um, for hopefully years and years and years to come. It's something um, we're really mindful of, Mike, there, because it's, it's a, a very important subject that because, you know, this pitch has cost us over a half a million pounds to, to lay and obviously mm -hmm. it needs to be loved um, yes. as well. I, th <laughs> I think it's played incredibly well for a young, immature pitch. Mm -hmm. I keep in very close contact with AgriPower, the guys who put it down, have regular meetings with them. They actually make a lot of site visits. And obviously, we've got Sports Turf, who are the grounds people actually doing the, the weekly works on it. They're pretty much down there every day. And we've got to be, we've got to ensure that we look after that prize asset for, for mm -hmm. us. And at this time of the year, in particular, because obviously the weather is, as it is, recovery times on the pitch are, you know, need to be very carefully managed. But going forward, what we're looking to try and do is to ensure that the housing of all of our teams across family Sutton United are appropriately housed. So it is part of our, our ongoing strategy in this regard. But right now, obviously, the absolute priority was to ensure that we had an EFL2 pitch that we were able to, to go into the Football League for the first time in our 123-year history with pride. And I hope everyone, uh, hope everyone A, understands that, and B, share my pride in, in that regard no it's, it's and again um one of the various different things i've had is, is i've been asked the question and uh, the question was um is it beyond your wildest dreams and the answer i've given is no it's not because i didn't know i was actually allowed to dream this big <laughs> having a good season in the national league and a nice fa cup run was beyond my wildest dreams but this is just completely completely insane yeah, but you, you and me are like, Mike, but, you know, again, someone, I think it was during lockdown, Ahmed did a piece with me and, and he asked a similar question. And obviously we were in the National League then and he said, well, what's the ambition of the football club? Is it, is it the Football League? This was before we, you know, went anywhere near the, the, the <laughs> last year. And uh, I said, and I, and I maintain it now, I said, the, the board's responsibility, it's a huge responsibility. This club means so much to so many people. It, it, our responsibility is to, is to enable Sutton United to be the best it can be, to be the very best it can be. Now, previously, that was to be the very best non-league club we could be. We then crossed the Rubicon unbelievably last year. We're now in the Football League. Now we're there. Now we're there. We've got to keep going forwards. My yeah. onwards and upwards mantra that everyone keeps laughing at me about, well, you know, it's alive and well because now that we're there, we're not going to go up there to make up the numbers. And I think we've demonstrated that. Oh, this God, yeah. And the ambition of our, our team, <laughs> our management team, what an unbelievable bunch of players and, and you know, Matt and Jason and the rest of them. It, it, it's been in, an incredible uh, rise in the last what, couple of years. I mean, the, the, the foundations that, that Paul Doswell put in place were absolutely magnificent for this football club enabled really what's happened now to happen mm -hmm. to, to, to a great degree. And Matt and Jason have come in and they have the work rate that they've put in, the, just the strength of togetherness, the preparation is, is it's, it's incredible. I mean, I'm privileged to see it at first hand. You, 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 I, I can't even begin to describe it to you. And they have got this drive and energy and ambition, that's, as have we, to take Sutton United as far as it can go. Now, obviously, we've only got a small stadium and we've got a certain budget at the minute. But yeah. those, you know, we're, we're, we want to ensure that we continue to push the to push the envelope as far as we can. What, why not, yeah. Mike? Why not? No, absolutely. I mean, again, one of the questions I was asked is, what what would you change about your club if, if there was anything? And I jokingly went, some money, please. And then I thought, <laughs> actually, do you know what? it would completely change the ethos of the club. If we suddenly won the Euro millions, we've suddenly got millions and millions of pounds, it would change everything we do because we're always looking for, as you say, the players, they've all got something to prove. They've all got something to kick on and they want to do it. Um, I've said several times, it, this, you see them on Twitter, this group of players, they, they, they absolutely seem to be gelling with each other because you see them taking the mick out of each other. Um, you, you see that little bit of banter going backwards and forwards. Um, and that gives you a little percentage that you're playing with your mates. As with everything, time. as with everything, Mike, you're, you're spot on with that. What would you change? 
yeah, obviously it'd be nice to have a bit more cash in the bank because that would enable us to do more things. But, yeah. but football club is is it's a it, the key word there is club, and and it's all about its people. Every organisation is always all about its people and how they work together and how what the, the shared ambition, the shared drive is. And I've never come across a setup with the unity that we, we presently have beautifully at Gander Green Lane on and off the pitch. And, and that has got, got us to where we've got to. I mean, I, you know, you look at, at Matt and Jason and, and what they've done with, with the set of players they've got, the way they've recruited, the, the, the whole culture of that group is so tight knit. And, you know, they, they, they wear that shirt with an immense amount of pride as well as do we off the pitch, you know, and, and that togetherness, you, you've got to have that. You've got to have that across every organisation. And, and, and yeah, it'd be lovely to have a, a bit more money. Of course it would. But ultimately, which is why I'd like to think that that ethos, that philosophy of the football club will remain firmly intact. It's always all about the people. Yeah. Well, I, I was obviously at, at the, the Meet the Manager um, night a few months back. And there was a couple of things that just made me just sort of sit up and go, oh, my God, um, where Matt had said that the um, scouting and the, the, the recruitment that they've got, essentially, he's got a plan for every player, that if someone had left, he's got a plan to, to who, who, who could, and he's got players lined up in his head, maybe in his head, or just for the next few years as well, which made me kind of go, hang on a bit, this, this, this doesn't seem right, this is this is proper for time. And then the other thing which just really made me just relax so much was, obviously, young manager, coming to the foot, first managerial job, doing blindingly well, getting linked with all sorts. Um, I think at the time he was being linked with Charlton at the time, and it had been Northampton last year. And he essentially said, at this club, we're putting everything in place. So I've got, I'm building everything. So why would I go somewhere where it's not working? It, when it, I've got it here to, to, to build it to how we want it. Yeah, it, it, it's an amazing story. Mike, and everyone, oh. everyone's part of it. And I think that so long as everybody keeps seeing that we're progressing and you can start seeing those steps, you can, you know, whether it be on the pitch and what we're trying to do there with recruitment wise and obviously the results are speaking for themselves at the minute or off the pitch. And every time you come down to Gander Green Lane, oh God, that, that's happening now there. And, oh yeah. No. So there is a, you know, a, a firm vision and plan to take this football club forward then everyone is riding that wave because you can't stop or you can't slow down because as soon as you do that, you go backwards. And we've had that conversation before and it's absolutely true. Now, you've got to have a, an immense amount of drive, energy and ambition right across the place to ensure that, that that train continues to go down the track at the pace that it's going. And we will not be lacking in any of those departments, I can assure you. What happens on the pitch and what happens going forward, you know, football is football but it won't be through the want of effort and it certainly won't be through the want of drive, energy or ambition, I can assure you of that. And as for this season so far, um, again, coming into it, strangely for the first, first time in many, many years, as the season started, I was kind of like, we're going to be okay, we're going to be fine, um, which is just completely insane because even in the National League, I'm like, oh God, we need to get to those 50 points, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, as the season started, I was kind of like, do you know what? Watching the teams that have come down, watching the teams that have gone up, keeping the majority of the team together, I was just straight away like, we might lower half of the table, but I didn't ever think we were going to have the, the, a relegation issue this season. Um, the 50-point mantra has been bombed, 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 and I know there's there's several people have got like League Two accounts and they're, they're finding it hilarious that we're up there in third, fourth position and all the Sutton fans are going, 50 points, 50 points, 50 points. They're like, you, you're yeah. joking, you're, you're, you're surviving, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah, we'll talk about it after we get 50 points. Yeah. Um, but as, as you guys look at the league table, how, how are you feeling? <laughs> is, is, is there a sense of, oh, God, no, not again? No, no, absolutely not. Quite the, I mean, listen, <sighs> you're right. You, we were in the unknown, League Two, this season. First priority, make sure we stay in the division and then we can build and grow and build and grow. But you're right, even in those early games, you know, we, we had some 
late heartbreak at Forest Green and Oldham, and I thought the away draw. I mean, I've I've been privileged to have gone to every game apart from one where I was tested positive for COVID and I missed it. But that's the only game I've missed all season. And even in those early games, away at Salford, away at Scunthorpe, you know, I'm thinking I think we're going to be all right here because just the level of preparation and just getting used to the to the level. And then we went on that amazing run. But for me, a couple of the really key performances this season. And it was they were kind of masterclass away at Northampton. I mean, it was that was just a superb performance there. And the way at Tranmere, who by the way, up until last weekend, barely lost a point since that 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 day. And then you look at the home form where we've you know we've we've picked up twenty eight get points. Is it from 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 the thirteen games? You know that's 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 top of the table form. So we're in the semi final of Papa John's Trophy, and we're in fourth place. On goal difference in the EFL two, this is living the dream. But you know, now that we're there, and I've said this before, now that we're there, well, let's kick on. Well, yeah. why shouldn't we? we? We're out to win every game. Of course we are. Have we got ambitions to look to to, to press towards the top? Legitimately, the fifty point barrier hopefully will be exceeded pretty soon. And then, as Matt has always said, right? Well, then we look to see what we need to get into the playoffs. And then once we've got that, well, let's see where we need to, you know, what, what else is possible. Mm -hmm. So, can, you know, if, if 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 that brings us into that position and we continue this form up until the end of the season, magnificent. Bring it on. Why not? Why not, Mike? Why not? Yeah. I said, um, as we were going through that, so several people said, oh, you had a bit of a dodgy start. And it's like, no, we didn't. We had some dodgy results. Mm. But honestly, if you go back to those games and you were able to turn, say that we'd won every single one of those games or got points where we'd lost, the other team wouldn't necessarily have been able to complain. So Forrest Green got, I think Dino made a rare mistake and it was a last minute goal. Okay, that's fine. Scunthorpe, I think Eastie missed a, a, a chance last couple of minutes. Um, there was something at Salford as well where we could have taken the lead. So I think if you went through every single one of those games and we'd come away with three points, the other team couldn't have argued. Um, yeah. So it... it, it He's Listen, you, you are where you are at the end of the season. You've merited it, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. you do. And, and these late goals, all right, it was a bit of a heartache, Forest Green, Oldham, that was a tough one to take. O o Rochdale away, I just felt, I mean, the, the, it was just such yeah. a silent journey home because having fought back from 2-0 down, yeah. then the Newport one as well. But... Port Vale at home. I mean, what a game! How you know, you, you, what a game! And then, and then we've we've done it to other teams, haven't we? Latterly, Stevenage mm -hmm. in the ninety eighth minute. We beat Exeter in the last minute. We beat Colchester in the last minute last time out. And yeah. that's football. That, that's yeah. that's how it works. And, and and Matt said it from the start. It'll even itself out. And so and so it's proved. But of course, you look at those games and say, oh, if only we'd hung on there. Yeah. Well, that's what Stevenage is saying, and that's what other teams are saying against us. So that's the game, isn't it? On, on the evening at out, I, I actually went through all the results and took every goal from 85 minutes onwards and just saying, well, if the whistle blew at 85 minutes, then what the actual result was. We're ahead of the game, aren't we? We're ahead of the game. One, one point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. so yeah. it is basically evened itself out. That we're one Did you point. Have you counted Crawley in that and Scunthorpe away as well? Are those two in there, they were late, weren't they? Or was that 84? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think, they, I think they were. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, it's... it's it, it, the lows and then the highs are exactly what, what we do. I think that the, the trainer fan I had on, he said that the, the pleasure and the pain of football is, is what his little mantra was. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been crazy. I was asked as well, if you were offered a playoff spot right now, would you take it? And my answer was, no, nah, let's just see how it goes. <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's enjoy the ride. If we just miss out, we just missed out. If we... <laughs> End of the day, yes, it would be terrible, terrible run to go on. But if we ended up going dropping down to mid-table at this point in time, you're still in our highest league position ever. Um, so it, it, it wouldn't make a real difference. It'd, it'd have a, a demotivation difference, but I don't see it happening. I just don't see. I just see. So we've I got see, nineteen. We've got nineteen games to go, Mike. Is, is the mm -hmm. truth of the matter? And, and you know, we're going for it. We're going for every yeah, point we can absolutely. get. And the transfer window is at a close. We know that we know we've got the squad that we've got now till the end of the season, and, and dare I say, we've got Harry Buterman and Kobe Rowe. They'll almost be like having new signings. New signings, yeah. So you know we're in a good place, but yeah. 
football can be a fickle old mistress sometimes and yeah. you know you've just got to you got to you know in the words of the old sage you've got to take each one as it comes but you know the levels of preparation and professionalism and just togetherness on the pitch we're trying to we're trying to match that off it yeah. and certainly we've got the togetherness and there's no lack of drive we've we've, we've just got to deliver <laughs> some of more of the infrastructure and and yeah. take Sutton United as far as it can be taken yeah well I mean what one um, one big thing to, to say, obviously we've covered the, the, the board uh, all fans and support the club and um, for, for years, but one big, big thing is when you, you often hear in lots and lots of different walks of life, oh, lessons have been learned and move on. But when we hear lessons have been learned, they, they, they have been learned and, and the things have, have changed to go on it. So yeah, if there's any mistakes that happen along the way, like um, obviously there was a bit of anger at the time, the Arsenal tickets, but it was okay. Yeah, we've learned from that. Now this is what's in place to, to fix it, and it kind of takes a, a little bit of a sting away to know that okay, it's, it's sorted now. It's not going to ever happen again. Yeah, we're all, we're all um, human beings. That Arsenal one. Do you know what? That was all. That oh, was yeah. a. It was a bit of a blur at the time. That. Yeah. That I, when I came down to the ground that morning and I saw the queues there, and I thought, oh my god, we're in trouble. But I, I'd like to think that a the lessons have been learned, but also really important to me this and all of us is that all of our our, our fan base our, our our true supporters got in and watched those games or that game in particular i'd like to yeah. think that we managed to get to the scenario where we managed to get tickets from sponsors and advertisers no, whoever it may be and ensured that the hardcore fan base watched that watch that game yeah. I, I i i did say at the time that um i should be the line almost so people who, because I, I attend basically all the home games and I smack it away. So people who go to more than me should have been ahead of me in the queue. And anyone who goes same as long me, join the queue with me as well. Um, but no, I, I think there were one or two people that um, had missed out. But then um, very nicely, you guys ran around with sponsors and sponsors were like straight away, yeah, 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 take, take, <laughs> sort it out. And so, yeah, I know everyone got it. But the, the point wasn't to moan about that, sorry. It was to, to say that, when we realised what happened, things are in place now to make sure that would never happen again. Um, We're learning stuff all the time, Mike, but that, yeah. was, a, that was a big one because it yeah. involved, you know, the most important people of all, which are, the, you know, the people who are supporting the club. So. Yeah, but the, um, the improvements, one of the things I've really liked is the extra gates on Collingwood um, because uh, in, the, in the park, because I can now use those gates. And because I used those gates coming in, I didn't actually realise that um, there was brand spanking new toilets um, <laughs> until I had to go in the other gates for a completely different reason. Um, so it was a case of um, everything is just ticking over. As you say, every time you go in, there's something new to look for, um, something something nice to, to, to say, oh, that's changed, that's changed. Um, but it's nice to have an update. Um, it's also nice to hear from your you guys' point of view. Um, and... Uh, Thank you very much for all the hard work that you guys have put in. Um, I know it's been busy. I know it's going to continue to be busy. Um, and thank you for your time today. No, and thank you as well, Mike. Thanks for, for doing what you do. And also to, to all of our amazing supporters. You know, it, it really is. On, on Saturday, uh, Carlisle, the Hardy 118, you know, the, the players <laughs> were, you know, it's quite emotional. They all went over there with the black shirts and pointing at the names. You know, that was... That, I, that's, that's another little thing. Who, who's, who's, can you say whose idea that was, who came up with that idea to put the names on the back? The kudos here goes to Gareth Miller. Okay, well done, Gareth. Brilliant, Gareth. Um, and, and yeah. Also, you know, he's 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 been a, a Sutton United fan for as <laughs> many, many years that we've moved the shop into the car park. He's kind of taken the bull by the horns there and, and, and works amazingly hard at it. But there are so many volunteers that I want to thank as well. This and, and that's what makes the club. Uh, and that shirt was a fantastic idea, simple idea, but that's kind of what we're about, isn't it? Yeah, no, think, the, what do you think? And, and the players love wearing that shirt, by the way. Yeah. I, I so, think that's you know, they're going over to our fans at the yeah. end and sort of, you know, doing yeah. something. That's great. Yeah, no, it is. I, I said that to um, Jim, uh, Nick Goodwin, the BBC. Um, I was saying, he was sort of saying different things about the club, and I just happened to be wearing that. When, in fact, this shirt is all the names of the, And he was like, huh? And I said, yeah, because obviously we bought season tickets knowing that we weren't going to get any games or many games, and people contributed to the fund. Yeah. The only tiny little 
my annoyance on the shirt is I've got it sat down ready to go oh lovely lovely I'm gonna look for my name on here and Lottie my daughter went it's there literally straight away <laughs> <laughs> you're probably on there you're probably on a couple it's, of it, times actually yeah, it's, it's probably there but it just come up thanks <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I you just ruined my evening um, yeah that was great I mean that 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 was a, a great manifestation where about the whole United We Stand initiative that kind of blew me away a bit as well. And that's yeah. when we really needed the support. And there you go. That's 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 what we're about. But it, absolutely, and it's also the supporters do these things because the club is so well managed. We're not one of these clubs that go cap in hand to the supporters every few months and every <laughs> do crowdfunding for covers um, and so on and so on. So when when it, it happens and it's needed, people are generally like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to support that. I'm going to support that um but yeah no it's, it's 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 been an amazing ride and long will it continue um one of the things i said years and years ago because of the management of the club you know you will be watching our football club i said at this level for the next 20 years i was horribly wrong because we're not watching our club at that level anymore we're watching it the next one up um i don't mind being wrong there that, that, that i'll take that one um but yeah very much looking forward to bristol rovers on saturday um if you haven't got a ticket already they are actually selling very fast according to a tweet so um need to get yourself down yeah we're just just on that we're, we're actually trying as as much as possible you know we've got season ticket holders which is a great figure half season tickets have gone have gone really well too um we're trying to encourage people who plan to come to the game to buy in advance either online or <laughs> or, or from from the shop uh, in order to avoid any congestion on on match day mm -hmm. uh, and also just because we're <laughs> We're uh, we're now getting crowds of three and a half thousand and north of that. You know, it's, it's, um, it's difficult to manage them all of a sudden. So we just need to make sure that we're 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 right on top of the whole attendance situation and to 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 get that figure as early as possible and get people having bought in advance. That that really helps. Yeah. So um, you yeah. buy in advance, you get your ticket on your on your phone or you can print it off with a piece of paper and you um you don't need to queue up. You just literally go to the turnstiles and they beep you in. So. Um, I know I've had to do it once or twice because I made a late decision for that one of the Papa John's, but I'm delighted I jumped on that bandwagon very early. I yeah. Justify, I can justify going. How, um, how, do you, how do you like the draw? Um, I do, actually, um, because I know a lot of people said they wanted Hartlepool, um, but I actually was, do you know what? Wigan are at the business end of the division above us. Give it another month, their games and priorities may well dramatically change and they might suddenly decide, actually we're going to take our eye off the ball a little bit from Sutton because it's only a little old Sutton. Um, so I, 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 yeah, I would have preferred it at home because I'm lazy and I don't like travelling, but um, I am going to that one, so it's well outside my M25 little <laughs> note. Um, <laughs> I'm going, going to that one. Um, but yeah, I, I, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's a bit like the Bohemians mate, game, it doesn't matter. Obviously, I know Matt and everyone would really, really like to get to Wembley, especially so he can he can tick that off for Bruce. But um, yeah, I, I I think it's just as winnable as any of the others because Hartlepool, where people are saying I would prefer to have them, their season is kind of petering out, so they they would be putting everything into that match. So I think it's a good one. Well, one, one thing you'll be absolutely 100% certain is that they'll be giving it a right go. There'll be no one leaving anything on the pitch, that's for no, sure. No, absolutely not. Um, but yes, thank you for all for listening. Um, I You can hit me up on any of the socials uh, at Sutton Podcast. Um, obviously, as I keep saying, I, I am on TikTok, but I don't understand it. So, um, but yeah, so Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Um, any comments, please let me know. Um, any corrections, just don't, because I can't can't correct things all the time um and i will see you guys on saturday and my next show will be on sunday take care guys thank you thanks mike forever amber thank you United! United! United!